If you want to have better matches, which engage more fans and get you bigger reactions, then you've got to stop doing the five things we're going to break down next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. Throughout my career, I've been very fortunate because I've worked in front of the cameras as a pro wrestler, referee, ring announcer, and commentator. And I've also worked behind the scenes in wrestling as a promoter, booker, agent, coach, and consultant. And I bring the sum total of all these experiences that I've had across more than 30 years now. And I serve it up right here to you each and every week on Till We Make It. If you're down with that, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe subscribe right now. You may know I break down everything which makes up a pro wrestling performance into one of three categories. They can be broken up into the mechanics, the performance, or the structure. And just so we're really clear before we dive into the material today, what are the mechanical elements of a pro wrestling match? Well, those are the physical movements, the moves and spots that we do in the ring. What are the performative elements of wrestling? Well, those are things like what we wear to the ring, our costuming, or how we perform certain emotions when we sell to the audience. Those are performative elements. And what about structural? What are the structural elements? Those are the underlying bones, the architecture that give our matches shape. It speaks to the way that we assemble the matches and tell a story which is satisfying to the viewer. And the five things that we're gonna go over, the five things you could start doing with your very next match, they cross over all three. So we're gonna make some stops in the mechanics, in the performance, and in the structure along the way. Ready? Let's start at the top. The very first thing you've got to stop doing is waiting for the opening bell to tell the audience what your character's value is. So if your character's in-ring value is raw strength, well, you can communicate that before the bell even rings by showcasing your incredible physique. Let them see your musculature. Impress upon them your raw strength. Or if your value is your speed, showcase that in your entrance. Showcase that while you're warming up, waiting for your opponent to be announced. But don't imagine that you have to wait for the opening bell to start shining out your value. The shine actually starts the moment the audience can see you. Before we dive into this next one, would you give me one second and one tap of your finger, please? And leave me a like a palooza down below. Thanks for doing that. The second key to having a better match You've got to stop prioritizing cute and clever over clear. And I admit, this is one I struggle with myself. In other words, clarity beats cleverness 95% of the time in a wrestling match. If it is clear, even as far back as the last row in the building, what you are doing, you are engaging the whole audience. And ultimately, that is going to earn you stronger reactions. Now, 5% of the time, if you want to go ahead and showcase this really clever way out of a hammerlock or your really cute waist lock sequence, go for it. But 95% of the time, the emphasis needs to be on clarity over cleverness. This next one is key, so listen carefully. If you want to have better matches, ones that engage every single fan in attendance, you've got to stop skipping over designing your heat. For the last couple of years, there's been a real trend in this happening when the time comes to design act two of a wrestling match. Oh, and then I guess we'll do some heat or, hey, I guess the heat will just happen while we're out there. This deserves every bit the attention to detail that acts one and acts three get while we're putting our matches together because Act two, the heat of our matches, is the emotional heart. This is when you get the buy-in from the audience. So if you want hotter reactions for your comebacks, for your hot tags, if you want to make sure the whole audience is engaged with your performance, 
you've got to make sure that you garner sympathy for the baby face. And that's not going to happen by accident. You have to design for it. When you do, then you'll be earning those peak reactions for your matches. If you want to have better matches, stop giving the audience hope spots before they ask for one. I am guilty of this more than I care to admit. But if you are the kind of babyface who cheerleads the audience from the ring by stomping your foot on the mat, or getting them to clap along, or otherwise signaling to them that you want them to react without allowing them to do it organically, well, they aren't really asking for a hope spot yet, are they? Just sit in that hold, sell, suffer, let them empathize with what you are going through, and then they will organically begin to crave a hope spot. But if they aren't yet asking for one, they don't need one. Don't rush it. Don't cheerlead. Stop giving them hope spots before they're ready. And this might be the most important one on the entire list. Don't make the mistake of thinking that your finishing move and the climax of the match are one in the same. Because they aren't. The climax of a story is the moment of highest dramatic tension, and we often make the mistake of thinking that it is the appearance, the arrival of our finishing move that creates that climactic moment. But it isn't. The reality is 15, maybe 20% of the audience actually recognizes your finishing move. If you're currently working on the independent circuit or the international circuit, 20% is probably the cap on that, unless you're cashing in all that equity from years of being on TV where your finisher was put over strong. Except for those cases, we're probably talking about 20% of the audience. So make sure that you're designing with a climactic moment in mind, regardless of whether or not you're going to be doing your finisher. The wrestlers that learn to parse this correctly are the ones who can earn massive reactions, great pops, and engaged responses from audience, even if they're going home on a schoolboy roll-up. Which of these five adjustments are you going to make in your matches first? Will you tell me down below in the comments right now? And now that you know what to do to start improving your matches, I want to help you improve your promos as well. Click on the video that's appearing on screen right now so you can keep on learning or take your education in wrestling to the next level by clicking on that orange box with a P in it, which will take you directly to my Patreon, where there are thousands of posts overflowing with pro wrestling experience and knowledge just waiting for you.